Hello, 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 everybody. Here is Dr. Gogoyor again talking about different topics of science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hms.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Gogoyor which topics do we have? research, community education, care delivery, hours, and achievement. The article to review today is The Healing Airwave. By allowing for hard conversation, podcasts, and radio can promote empathy and reduce stigma. There is something powerful about telling a story, especially when it touches on subjects that we are recruiting to talk about. All right, I'm going to start straight away to this review. Toward the end of her father's life, years after dementia had left him unable to speak or recognize anyone, say Howard, Harvard complicated feeling. I would just pray for him to die, she reckoned during 2014 in the TED Talk. I felt so horrible wishing death on my own father who I loved so much at that time. The thoughts felt too shameful to share, so she stayed silent about them for years until she finally discussed them in front of a room full of psychiatrists during a lecture on dementia. Howard herself and a psychiatrist were nervous. She suspected she shot and appalled her colleagues, but telling the story was cathartic. On her way home, she pulled over to win, realizing that she was finally granted her self-compassion for her grief. Then the emails start coming. From Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind guys that we mostly days are doing these beautiful reviews from the magazine of Harvard Medical School. And the reviewing that we are doing today belongs to this beautiful article, The Healing Airways. Alright, so I continue doing the review. Then the emails start coming. Lecture at teens share similar experience as her. I felt the same way about my mother, one girl, but I was ashamed I didn't tell anybody. So many pray of death precisely because they care. Another girl expressing gratitude for the courage it took to share. You just made it safer to be real about this. Whole world understand that sharing a story about death is difficult. Our culture is pretty grief absurd, she said. We don't really know how to be our feelings or what to say. We depot around death. But she also knows the value of speaking out, bringing up difficult subjects for the sake of helping people feel less alone and ashamed as long been her passion. While in medical school, for instance, she has involved into design of classes on human sexuality, culture, identity in medicine, and living with a life treating illness. Oldwar launched Safe Space Radio in 2008. The radio show and podcast is a public platform to discuss all kinds of people around topics, death, mental illness, racism, sexuality, trauma, and more. Her interviews have encouraged hundreds of guests, including fellow psychiatrists, actors, veterans, referees, and transgender teens, to share their stories. By making a space for thought conversations, Howard tackles what she argues is a, a heart of the suffering of mental illness, the shame that made people treat into silent isolation and the stigma that perpetuates their pain.
While hardware stresses that a radio show or podcast is not a substitute for therapy, she knows that the convenience of audio content is clear, is often free, available on demand, and can be consumed in private. And it is increasingly popular among young people. Research indicates that three quarters of teens and young adults experiencing depression attempt to access other people's healthy stories through digital materials like podcasts. But do we know how effective these digital materials can be? There is compelling evidence that can be beneficial, particularly programs featuring personal stories. Research suggests that stories can lend meaning and coherence of traveling experiences. Powerful first-person narrative can even change brain chemistry. A 2015 study in Cerebrum, for example, compared participant reaction to storylines with a strong R versus dot with flat narrative, finding that dramatic R trigger an increase in oxytocin, a hormone associated with feeling as well being an emphatic subject were also more likely to engage in behaviors intended to help others, such as donating to charity in response to an effective person history. Another way to gauge a story's effectiveness is to examine the brain regions it activates. A 2021 paper in the Journal of Communication compared fMRI imaging of participants' brain while listening to three types of recordings. Stories play backwards instructive material, in this case how to use a PCR, a story describing personal experiences and challenges, while all recordings recruit brain areas associated with processing sounds. Only the narrative stories activate regions associated with higher order functions, particularly regions related to self-referential thinking, social and motivational processes, and memory retrieval. Researchers observe these patients across participants, indicating that a single message communicated widely, such as on the radio, can have a common influence on many. Audio medium also matters. While facial expressions are widely considered key to coveting emotion, recent research revealed that tone of voice could play an even bigger role. A 2017 study in American psychologists explored the connection between voice-only communication and empathic accuracy, or known ability to perceive the thoughts and emotions of others. Pairing a participant for two conversations, one with light on and one with light off, researchers found the participants more accurate interpret the emotions in the dark when they couldn't see the other person. These results don't surprise hardware. When you only listen, you are picturing the character in your mind, she says. This investment of your imagination helps you take to their perspective. You open your heart to their dilemmas and you have more empathy for them. Hardware empathy is the key of combating stigma, including among doctors. Anyone who has gone to the doctor knows you want to empathy doctor, someone who listens well and is kind and gets it, she said. And it is very painful when your doctor doesn't. It can be very dismissed and charming. Yet, yeah, study including a systematic review published this year in BMC Medical Education support previous evidence indicating that empathy tends to decline during medical school. The effect is especially pronounced around mental illness. Hardware say, as the students are more likely to encourage patients only during acute crisis, a stigma around mental illness leads to diagnosis overshadowing a clinician tendency to misattribute physical symptoms to mental illness and a stigma can discourage those with conditions like depression, anxiety, PTSD or bipolar disorder from seeking treatment.
As medical training evolved to include more multimedia and self-direct forms of learning, Hardware hopes podcasts like her can complement a traditional textbook education. A 2023 paper she co-authored in academic psychiatry evaluates whether a narrative podcast, especially a mismatch of space-based radio programs, could help foster empathy and decrease mental health stigma among medical students in their psychiatric clerkship. Halward and colleagues found that more than 90% of listeners felt better able to identify with and more prepared to work with patients facing the issue addresses. Practicing physicians can also benefit from safe spaces radio programs. Episodes are used in continuing medical education courses designed to help physicians become more comfortable with discussing difficult subjects such as climate anxiety, bullying, and suicidal ideation among LGBTQ teens that can affect the mental health or the patients. In March, Howard donated her 305 episodes achieved to the Center of the History of Medicine at the Francis Account Library of Medicine under the care of Director Scott Podolsky, Howard classmate, and the Center's staff and research archivist. She hopes it will serve as a teaching tool for students and community members I like. In a speech during an event marking the donation, Halward played a recording of a man discussing what Safe Space Radio had meant to him. That listener, a main base tracking company office manager, had happened to hear an episode about dementia and caretaking one day in his car because he cared for his own parents when they had dementia. It had risen. I felt normal for the first time, he said. I wasn't overreacting. I wasn't underreacting. My feelings were legitimate. It made going forward possible. At instead out, the episode he heard was one of the Hogwarts most personal. The person being interview was her mother. The episode delved into the pain and discomfort for watching Hallward's father decline, including the difficult feeling of hysteria. It captured how hard conversation promotes healing even for those who happen to tune in. When we come out of silence and share, we help other people less different that they aren't so alone, Hallward says. We transform our suffering into a gift. Alright guys, remember you can download and browse this beautiful article, The Healing Airways, from the magazine of Harvard Medical School. This article has been wrote by Molly Dono, she is the associate editor of Harvard Medicine Magazine. You can download this beautiful podcast from Dr. Wild Podcast at Spotify platforms. Alright, see you next time. Bye bye.